Hey everyone, Eggman here with a, another video, and today we have a top 16 breakdown for the Booster Boxes offline regionals in Virginia this past weekend. It was 386 players and 8 rounds of Swiss into this top 16 cut, and a couple things before we get started. First, shouts to the Booster Box for running this event. This is their first regionals ever for the One Piece card game, and I heard it went really, really well. And then also for live streaming the event, you guys can check out their VOD in the description, also linked on this page, and this page also has all of the top 16 16 decklist for this event as well and i really do appreciate the booster box getting that out for us too so anyways if you guys want to check out any of that stuff you can check out the description for it but we're going to jump on into this one so again it was 386 players eight rounds of swiss best of one and we did have this top 16 breakdown of six moria five katakuri three sakazukis and two copies of yamato so only four leaders into a top 16 is not fantastic, I'll say. Uh, I think it's just been more and more of these three big bullies in, in the meta. Uh, Yamato would not be the one that I would think would be the fourth leader into this. I would say probably Reiju based on my own experience for it. But if we look at the, the leader breakdown as well... We did have just under half of the tournament being Katakuris and Gekko Morias, but we also had Yamato be the third most uh, brought leader into this event, which is a little peculiar, uh, beating out Sakazuki specifically. So I will say that based on the numbers, and this is an appro uh, approximate leader breakdown. I don't think this is like a true, true breakdown for it, but uh, just because we don't have all the numbers for it. But based on the numbers that I, I was given and doing some exp uh, like some inter interpolating from it as well, uh, this is kind of what it looks like. So uh, only, you know, Katakuri, Sakazuki, and Moria taking up under, around 50% of the meta is a little bit low, uh, especially if you convert to how much they got into the top 16, which was 14 of the 16 spots as well. So I don't know. I think there are like just a lot of leaders that are like in that, like, oh, underneath the big three spot, but it's going to be very tough for them to kind of break through with just how consistent and strong these three are as well. So anyways, that is my kind of thoughts on that. We're going to go over the top placing leader for each one of these leaders that we have, starting off with their first place, which is Timothy's version of Charlotte Katakuri. And uh, Katakuri has been in on, I'm going to say just like a really big tear for this format. Um, it's just been very strong. I think that it has uh, a lot of just consistent ways to not only gain a lot of advantage, like the 7k off the Charlotte Katakuri is fantastic for, for one, just doing one damage, especially if you look at the top card of your life and you realize you have Kiku Nojo there, uh, you will get to play that for free afterwards, especially since there's just so many four life leaders that I think are around right now. So that's really impactful for that matchup. Uh, Seven Drop Linlin is in a good spot when Reject is still in this game, which we have about two more months of this card plaguing uh, you know, the, our opponent's decks, which I am super ready for this to be gone, but uh, we'll get there when we get there. And then just so many good cards that we can get out of our life. We have uh, like Onami, which is fantastic no matter where you see it. We have Pero Sparrow, which I feel has just been such a good tempo play as is, just to continue to get that poke of damage and get some more consistency on your top end later. We have our Sanjis and then uh, Satoris as well. And then Gadatsu's at two copies to help get some like removal later in the game. So, uh, or like in the mid game, uh, if you go first, because generally I like playing first on Katakuri. I think it's very strong, but there are different ways. Obviously, you want to get to 10 drop uh, very quickly if you end up having it too. So being on the even curve gets you there a little bit quicker. But honestly, I think this deck is a, a terror. And when you have just so much advantage in early tempo combined with now the ways that we have like more ways to burn damage uh, from 7 drop Linlin being more menacing and reject, I think the deck is just very tough to, to get around if they have their optimal curve a lot of the time. So Katakuri, I think, went from a deck where you kind of had to see good triggers to win the game to... Triggers will win you on the spot, and even if you don't see them, you're still in a pretty good spot in a lot of matchups. So I think that's kind of been a transition we've seen in the, the OPO6 kind of meta for it. So anyways, this is Timothy's list for this one, and congratulations for their first place with Katakuri. Next up, we have Gecko Moria. So this is Caden's version of the build. And uh, one one kind of big transition for this week compared to previous weeks of this meta are the inclusions of Rebecca and Hina. I would say that they were not in a lot of the builds that we were seeing in the early weeks, but uh, with that piece being more popular through this week, uh, of the six copies of Gekko Moria that ended up uh, getting into the top 16, four of them were playing the two and two of Rebecca Hina, the rest were not, so the other two weren't, but 
Um, I think like, you know, day one, like, oh, Gekka Moria, such a good card. It plays two cards. So, you know, it's an eight cost card that plays six cost worth of cards. But then also when one of the cards is Rebecca, that's just, you know, increased from there. So like the idea is you can play Rebecca, you can get a, uh, a brand new from uh, the other part of Gekka Moria, you have a four drop blocker, and then you're able to draw off the brand new. There's so many 2Ks that you can find off this card with the Suru are just also just having, like brand new just doesn't whiff in this version of Moria. And then also uh, your Rebecca can get a 2K off of like your Perona, off of your, uh, yeah, off your Perona mostly for this one. But uh, I, I think that the deck is just very consistent. Um, I think that it's also has tools for most stuff that's in the game. And for a five life leader, you just get that kind of extra card advantage kind of thing because you get one more card uh, since you're at five life and you're, you can be a little bit more aggressive on like the removal just because you know that you can, you know, you're naturally more defensive because you have that extra life too. So uh, other just kind of choices is that we have only one copy of Borsalino, which this is still sometimes my favorite card, but against Sakazuki, it doesn't really do anything. They have just so many ways to remove it, so I understand maybe going down on that copy. Kuzan, uh, if you're able to establish it, you're in a good spot. I've also noticed that with Moria, sometimes I just don't have like the removal potential for it, so just playing Kuzan from Moria to draw a card is still good card advantage for me. And then I think that's really just the changes I would make. Only three copies of Suru, that's fine. Uh, two Helmepos, because... That card with uh, with Moria and with Luchi is great. Even just with Absalom, is fantastic. And then our four four of Ice Age and Great Eruption. So don't have much more to say, but congratulations to Caden for their finish there. And then next up we have Sakazuki. So this is Chris's pack, uh, Chris Pack's version of the deck on this one. And uh, we've we've kind of had like this back and forth with Sakazuki in a lot of ways. That um, I think that it's been. Um, you know, is the Navy HQ worth it? Is the Marine Ford kind of put it in in this one? And uh, I think that it's it's just in an okay spot for for what it is. But it does kind of help with the Moria matchup. But I think it helps like if you see it, but then it makes the deck a little bit inconsistent at times, especially if you don't see it. Um, there, like sometimes you just don't even have time to establish it, which is kind of rough for the deck. So. I think more people have just been transitioning off of it. It was nice to try out, but more people have been, you know what, just running the quote-unquote standard version is in a good spot as well. I will say that I've noticed a lot, uh, like a downward trend of not only uh, Sakazuki topping, but also just people who are bringing the deck to the events. Uh, in my mind, it might be a little bit of a coupling of one, that uh, Moria is just kind of like a similar deck but it's a little bit easier to play i'm not saying that it's easy to play but compared to sakazuki i would say sakazuki is the more complex one and so in a in a game like this where you're playing a lot of rounds i think that moria can be more consistent and it's a, a little bit easier to play of the two so more people are transitioning to that and with the knowledge that sakazuki is getting banned some people might just be not playing it as much as they would be knowing that they're going to have to lose playing this leader anyways and so they might get a head start in playing gecko moria so they're more comfortable with it in opo seven as well but Regardless of that, um, Sakazuki, I still think, is a very strong deck. Uh, I also am not uh, personally offended by it getting banned in a couple of weeks. So uh, that's that's my thoughts. That might not be your thoughts, but um, it's it's looking as it's, it's looked like for a bit. Uh, I don't think there's many new techs for this one. And again, all the ones that top, topped were Marine Ford less version. So looking like this, having a good amount of great eruptions on Ice Age and on top of the Hound Blaze and Amas, and then no copies of the the stage for, for the deck either. So... I don't have much more to say, but congratulations to Chris for their top finish with this one. And then to wrap it up, we have two copies of Yamato. So we have Kevin's version as well as Violet's version of them here. And we're going over both of these just because, uh, honestly, uh, it's the only deck that wasn't in the big three that tops. So I want to kind of go over, but both these decks are completely different. Besides the leader and uh, I guess four copies of Onami, uh, the decks are, are in a different spot in a, in a lot of ways. So Kevin's build is more, I would say, like the yellow aggressive build. Uh, we kind of focus on uh, just getting bodies out to be able to get the plus uh, two dawn with the activate main from Yamato. This is helpful for like boosting up Ashura, so this can start attacking. Also, this can play off of our life to find copies of the uh, You're the One Who Should Disappear, your Ohm and Holies, which Ohm Holy off of a Dracul Mihawk is putting three bodies on the board. And then if you defend them, it just means that you always have something to put your uh, Dawn on to a character with your Yamato effect, which in other builds I've noticed it's just been kind of tricky to do that. Uh, we've got a, a good amount of other cards that have trigger, like the Satori, and obviously Kukunojo. Uh, we run a couple copies of Koizuki uh, Momosuke, 
This is uh, sometimes it's a little bit slow, sometimes a little clunky in hand because it doesn't have counter, but uh, and it only gets cards with uh, what the Wano type for it. But you can use this obviously so in conjunction with the Hiori. So you technically like heal one, and then you also put something into your life, such as like a Kiko Nojo. Even like attack with Kiko Nojo, and then using Momo to put it back into our life means that if they hit us, we get Kiko back, and then we didn't really lose anything either. Um, it means it's also probably a little bit trickier to get Kiko off the board too, especially against something like Sakazuki, where they might have been able to bottom deck it last turn. Now they kind of have to hit it out of life first, and then they have to bottom deck it, which might be the sequencing uh, a little bit trickier there. And then our kind of end condition is Hody Jones, which being able to use this to get around two blockers is fantastic, especially since you can do it where, uh, you know, if you use this for seven Dawn, you can use the other two Dawn for something like a 200 million volts, give it to your leader. So you can make your leader a 9K, and then you can make your Hody Jones a 10K by adding the two additional Dawn afterwards. So pretty good closer for the game. I think there's a lot of situations where that is enough. And uh, stuff like Sakazuki and sometimes Moria, they kind of defend themselves by having a lot of blockers out, but not a lot of cards in hand, which is where Yamato and uh, Hody Jones can kind of punish that and kind of go for the game when they don't actually have that much counter left in hand too. So this is Kevin's build for it. And then lastly, in Violet's build, this was more of the Fortress build for the deck kind of just focusing on taking a lot of life to get a lot of hand advantage and then by a conjunction of like using our Yamato leader effect with a useless Captain Kid means that we can have enough Dawn to establish a 10 drop Dofi while we already have eight drop Kid out and then we can put two Dawn underneath our Kid to read all, redirect all the attacks at the same time. So being able to just make all these big bodies that are kind of hard to answer uh, like Sakazuki and Moria can answer them occasionally, but it takes a lot of resources to do so, and eventually they will run out of those resources if you're still able to put extra copies of Usus Captain Kid and Dofi on the board. Also means that you get to, like, Dofi being able to, like, rest your, or stun your opponent's leader, and if it's Moria, being able to use that to prevent them from, like, playing something from their trash that they'd want to use otherwise, and, uh, and some decks, like, obviously, like, Sakazuki can't attack with their leader either, which means they lose one of their minus one costs, which could come up in some situations, so, uh, I think that the deck is in a good spot because of this, uh, we do have, like, some protection off the Rosinante, it doesn't protect bottom decking, but, um, I think, you know, some decks just can't answer this card still, right? Uh, I think Moria has some tough times answering it. Sakazuki probably is the best deck to get around Yusuke's Captain Kid. And then also, like, Katakuri, unless they play their A-drop Katakuri, they can just, like, be stuck behind. Like, you can just be uh, defended by this Yusuke's Captain Kid for a long time if you, you have the resources for it, too. So... Uh, a kind of conditional, but I think it works out in a lot of ways. Um, I've also seen like some hybrid builds where you kind of play like a little of like the loaded ground yellow end, but you still have the eight drop kid as like your backup. But I just wasn't. Uh, I think like these are like the two extremes for more like aggressive and then like more defensive, and uh, both can really work out. So these are Kevin's and Violet's builds for these. Congratulations for their toppings with Yamato, and that's going to be it for this one. Again, not as much variety as I would personally want to see. Especially since this is like within the first couple weeks of this meta, uh, since it was just dropped last month. But I think that is also just kind of an issue with knowing what the meta looks like the day we get it from Japan and other uh, countries who get the, the meta before we do. But uh, I think there are some cool trends that we're still able to see. And uh, I'm really happy that we were able to go over this event as well. So anyways, that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And uh, if you haven't hit that like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. If you've made it this far, you probably like my content in some regard. And that's going to be it for me. So again, thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you all next time.